So yeah, today we're talking about the 1973 film Westworld, directed by Michael Crichton, who has been mainly known as a writer. I know he did Westworld. I've heard of Coma before and Looker. But he is very well known for hmm, writing um, Jurassic Park. You ever heard of yeah? You ever heard of Jurassic Park? I have. And Twister. Hmm, never seen Twister. I kind of want to. But um, yeah, so we have Westworld. And if we're thinking of Westworld in the context of Jurassic Park, real quick, I mean, you can very clearly see the uh, the similarities. This one is a vacation to a, a Western world, or your choice of one of three different worlds. And then Jurassic Park's just the uh, dinosaurification of that. So yeah, when this film came out, just talking about the actors real quick, Yul Brenner was already a star. Um, when I told my mom I was I was watching Westworld, she was like, oh, is that the one with Yul Brenner? And apparently he was huge. And I honestly had not really heard of him before, but um, he was big in The Magnificent Seven and The King and I. And I believe this was a play as well that he just was like an icon for. Um, and I did a bit of research on him a bit before this. And he died in 1985 and he was just like superstardom then and he made this commercial this anti-smoking ad that he wanted to air after he died so he had this anti-smoking ad that was just him being like i am now dead don't smoke <laughs> and i mean it's probably hopefully pretty effective but yes yul brenner and then richard benjamin who went on to be a director um, born in 1938. Look at that young strapping lad. And in the movie, he has a very nice mustache. Um, director of a few things. Can't say I really heard of any of them. But I mean, Mermaids, Money Pit. There's, there's Tom Hanks flick. My favorite year. A few, few like, seems like rom-coms. We got, is that Brendan Fraser in there? So, you know, directed a few things. Good for him. And then we have... Uh, Thanos' father, James Brolin. This guy's just like, this guy's just so suave. That's a word I would use. He's just, he's just a suave man. And, uh, I guess he's had, like, pretty great career as well. Catch Me If You Can, Lightyear, True Grit. You know, pretty, pretty good stuff. And apparently he's still working on, like, uh, you know, voice acting stuff, stuff in video games, so that's pretty cool. Oh, Fantastic Voyage. I've always been meaning to watch this. Is he, like, a main guy in here? I don't know, he's pretty far down there, James Brolin. But 1966, early sci-fi. I should watch that one. But alas, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Westworld. Um, So Westworld is like, I mean, 1973, pre-Star Wars. I always say that's like a monumental moment in science. It's pre-Star Wars. So everything like technically that people are able to achieve pre-Star Wars is very, very impressive because, you know, Star Wars did so much for that. But yeah, pre-Star Wars, and it feels like just such a classic sci-fi story, very like very like Asimov, very just like great concept. And I think the themes of just thinking about the IP as a whole is like you have this great concept, and in this one, it's kind of just like introduction, see what we can do with that concept, maybe like explore the themes a little bit, but then mostly it's just like this whole package trying to show you this cool thing, um, but also just being, you know, an entertaining film with some action in it and everything. And then I think that the show, even though I haven't seen it, but I know just from seeing that trailer and just like the talk that I've heard around it, it's much more like, it's much more serious, much more exploring the themes of like what it means to be this AI robot and like them trying to find their humanity. But are they robots? Should we care? Should we have sympathy for them? Blah, blah, blah. And just like is Westworld, you know, morally right? Um, I guess, you know, again, themes with... Uh, with Jurassic Park as well. But apparently in an interview, the director, Michael Crichton, instead of like AI and robots being the main theme, he thought one of the main themes that he was trying to push was like corporate greed and how far they go. They'd be putting these people in dangers and all they'd be thinking about is money still, which again, I think it was a minor thing, but I think most people agree that, you know, the themes of robot and humanity are way more relevant to this piece of work than, uh, than the corporate greed part. But I mean, I guess it did still have a, a part to play. But all in all, I think my just spoiler free thoughts at first is just, this is so fun. This is such a fun movie and it ages very, very well. And I think that's a lot of things. Oh, yeah, by ages very well, I think it just did a lot of things ahead of its time. I think that's 
a lot of the visuals, the stark contrast between the the Western world and then like the very white, clean interior workings of the lab were very cool to see. The way they did all the effects of like having the robots like taking their faces off and all that and like all the machinery that they're doing on that. It's a lot of fun. Um, and then again, the eyes that they have that you, you can tell they're a robot based on the eyes. But they say in the movie that you can tell they're a robot based on their hands because hands are so complicated and they can't figure it out. And then to the viewer only, not to the people in the world, the eyes give it away. It's just kind of a, a, a signal to the audience. But I mean, just think about it, it's like really hands. You're making these other like the, these robots that are otherwise like fully human. You're getting like all their facial features right. I mean, a lot of the purpose of Westworld and Roman world and medieval world is um for seeking out your pleasures. Um, at the very beginning of the film, we have people coming back and they're they're being interviewed by a guy and it's like, so how was the world that you went to? And they're like, it was great. And then one woman was like, oh, the best part was the men. And then one guy was like, yeah, I, I got in so many sword fights and I married a beautiful princess. And it's like, <laughs> it's just so silly that they're admitting this on like a like a talk show. And it's like, literally, it seems like the main purpose of these worlds is just to like get with robots. And we're like, okay, but it's like they're getting that, all that anatomy correct, and they can't they can't get their hands right. That's what we're. That's the turning point. Their hands. That's what gives it. Okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. You know, okay, you know. I think it could have been thought through a little more. Okay, okay, whatever. I, alas, but I mean, I think that the the first half of the film it does a lot of like you know setting up what's happening, telling you what's happening. I mean. Uh, James Rowland's character named John Blaine. Hmm, wonder what that's a reference to. John Wayne. Hmm. Um, they're just sitting on the plane in this scene that you see in the poster right here, and he's just explaining the whole thing to him and the to uh, Richard Benjamin's character Peter and the audience. He's like, so Richard Benjamin's character's like, so uh, you got to you can just you can just shoot anybody. You just got a gun. Yeah, they're all robots, man. You can just shoot anybody. Yeah, they, they it's the hands. They don't perfect the hands, you know. It's just you get to go to all these worlds, blah, blah, blah. They're all robots. Okay, setting everything up. Okay, cool, cool, cool. It was still fun, though. I did like the future-y set designs of going to, uh, going to Westworld. And then we get to Westworld, and it's pretty fun. They're just going about their day. Yeah, they get to Westworld. They go to a bar, get into a fight. You know, Yul Brenner's character's there. They're like, they just get to shoot him down. Like, whoa, that felt so real. Oh my gosh. That was so cool and crazy. And yeah, so first half of the movie, setting everything up, pretty fun. Everything's going well. And then second half of the movie, everything going wrong. I think the start of everything going wrong went really, really well. And it was really, really interesting. And it's like, you're genuinely like, how are they going to figure this out? How are they going to get out of this? But then, ugh, then there's just like, it just drags on. And the ending... I wasn't as satisfied with but all in all i think before i go into more spoilers that i think oh this is just a must watch for anybody who's a fan of sci-fi ages really well a lot of the effects are pretty decent there's just one effect where you see a pov from a robot and it's very like pixelated and apparently that was very ahead of its time um it looked pretty cool i dug it um and then there was also just some themes again it was just very well written a classic sci-fi story that are just expanding on pretty cool themes and again in further works it's been expanded more in the tv show but uh i mean it still works really well good starting point i feel like a lot of the ones back then were just good starting points and they just like pretty solid works in themselves because they're just trying to be this one thing not trying to make franchises from the get-go so i think it worked very well okay going into more spoilers one thing i did want to talk about that i think a few people I noted uh, on the interwebs talked about were, yeah, again, being ahead of its time. Specifically one part in the film, they were talking about how they don't know why all these robots are like defecting. I forget exactly what the uh, the defects were, but originally they weren't like that crazy. Oh, one of them was like in Roman world. This like, this damsel was into taking on the, uh, the seduction of this one older gentleman who were like, He's like a B plot line. We're just watching him in Roman world trying to like get with the queen. And then it's like, oh, uh, one of the robots denied a seduction from a guest. That isn't supposed to happen. So they had to take her in and do some work and honor. And so all this to say is like all these like little clues of these robots malfunctioning. Then you have the snake biting on a, on a James Brolin's arm, another malfunction. So you had all these malfunctions. And the way they talk about it in the boardroom, they say it's kind of like it's kind of like a sickness that's being being spread throughout all of these 
these machines. And keep in mind, this is made in 1973. So they're literally like predicting, I feel like at 1973, maybe I'm just wrong here, but like computer viruses weren't really a thing back then. And so like predicting computer viruses, I mean, it is a cool like link to make. I feel like back in the day where it's like, oh yeah, these computers are also having sicknesses. But like now looking back from like, you know, 2023 lens, it's like, oh yeah, computer viruses, this, this makes total sense. And it was just, you know, another one cool thing ahead of its time. Um, I think that a lot of the behind the scenes stuff was pretty fun. I love seeing uh, the people come in at the end of the day and all the people dead on a, at, at Westworld, them coming in, just, you know, picking them all up, getting them ready to go, putting them in the, uh, the tunnel to go back to the workshop. I feel like that was kind of like the first introduction we had to the behind the scenes. It was a good, like, you know, following a dead body going into the workshop. We see this, like, just hall lined with a bunch of beds of, like, animals, different people, different robots and everything. It was pretty awesome. Um, but again, like I was saying earlier, I think that's the second half of the film. It started off really, really well. You know, James Rowland's character gets bit by a snake. Um, hmm, what's going wrong? The people in the boardroom, they're like, yeah, things are going wrong. And then one guy in the boardroom is like, it's fine. You know, we'll just go to the end of the week. We don't need to shut down. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I think he literally just says like, everything's fine. It's just like clearly not. Um, and then, yeah, we have Yul Brenner's character come back after like this big bar fight they're they're like hung over in the morning he comes and they're like oh not now and james Rowland's like ah let me shoot him and then james Rowland just gets shot and then this starts off pretty much like the entire last 30 minutes of the movie maybe not 30 minutes maybe i'm overestimating a bit but then yule brennan's character is just chasing richard benjamin benjamin for for 30 minutes and it just felt very uninspired it was like okay action set piece to end this instead of like you know i mean me being a pretentious sci-fi fan I would rather, you know, a more psychological ending. But I feel like it didn't really deliver on that. It had this whole chase scene. Then they go into, a, he goes into Roman world. You know, he goes all around. He goes into all the different worlds. And then they end up fighting in medieval world. And then he burns him. Oh yeah, that, that also didn't make sense. I really did love like the, the pixelated POV from the robots. But then it's like heat was something that was like, was blocking him from actually noticing Richard Benjamin's character. And it's like this natural torch on the wall of medieval world. And so you would think that the robots would be fine with having those torches there if some of them are built to go in medieval world and interact in areas where those torches are there. So it wouldn't mess up their computing. But then that's something that like that blocks. It. It's like you didn't even need to have that. There was this chasing and then they just like get over it right when like Richard Benjamin's character makes a noise. And so it's like, why did this? Why? Why? Unnecessary stuff happening and then they just have a fight he burns up comes back for a second burns up again and then it ends richard benjamin's character is just like ah i'm safe but holy what an experience guys you wouldn't believe what i've been through you know you know oh what, what's that cause hmm that's me wonder how i got here let's go back no that's what it felt like at the end um yeah and bit unsatisfying um i did like you know you're on this, this horse chase, maybe lasts a bit long. And then they get to finding this like a uh, Westworld technician who's like working on some bodies. And, see, and he's like, yeah, you can't do anything. It's it's all, you're, it's all done though. Like these robots, they'll stop at nothing. You're, you're done. And then he gets shot up. That stuff was good. But then, you know, it just keeps on going. This chase, the, honestly, the music during the chase though, like the non-Western, like techno-y kind of stuff, pretty supreme, pretty great. The normal Western stuff is like, okay, whatever. But that techno -y stuff was kind of sick and kind of really did like set the scene there. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm trying to think if there's any other scenes that were like very, very notable to me. I mean, you had the uh, all the technicians suffocating in their own office, which is like kind of funny. It's like, did it really need to happen? I don't know. Um, you have Alan Oppenheimer who plays like the lead technician of Westworld. He's pretty great. He's a living legend. He was born in uh, 1930. He was old timer in Toy Story 4, apparently, you know, still doing stuff. He was great. He was awesome. I love the look to him. Apparently, he's related to, uh, to you know, Robert Oppenheimer, Robbie Oppie. I mean, all in all, it was a good time. A bit surface level at some points, but I think it was just crafted very well. Um, set design was pretty fun. I mean, I've heard that the original cut was pretty long maybe like three hours i feel like maybe i'm pulling that number in two or three hours and had to cut it down and you could definitely feel it because it felt like they kind of wanted wanted to go to 
Roman world or medieval world. And so they kept in one plot line of that one older guy in medieval world. And then, so, you know, he's trying to seduce the queen. Then he has a fight with the Black Knight that he assumes he's going to win, but then he just gets stabbed. And it felt like there was supposed to be more in those two parts, especially Roman world, because we see it like very few times. It's like there was probably another B plot in Roman world that they just cut out. So it just did feel a bit disjointed. I mean, it is called Westworld, though. So we know we did stay in Westworld most of the time. But, I mean, ugh, it was just a classic sci-fi. Very interesting. Very fun. Um, you know, it's it's a fun film where it's like an original sci-fi concept where maybe they didn't go, like, all the way. They were just trying to make this one package. It had a lot of action in it still. But, like, the what-ifs, thinking about it's like, oh, what if this happened? What would happen? Blah, blah, blah. It's like one of those worlds, as in, you know, Westworld, the concept of this, like, robot vacation area there's just so many different scenarios that could happen and i feel like there's still a lot different stories that could be told not just in westworld in different different kind of worlds which they did make a sequel called future world which apparently wasn't as critically acclaimed or notable 2.7 here on letterbox two years after the westworld tragedy in the delos amusement park corporate owners have reopened the park over one billion in safety and other improvements. Wow, very cool. So you know, they're investigating a new park. Just prior to arriving at the new park, however, Browning is given a clue by a dying man that something is amiss. Peter Fonda, Yul Brenner still in it. Different director, but um, there. Wait, what? Where the only way to survive is to kill yourself? What? I mean, you never know. Could be interesting. Could be interesting.